When the user taps on a button or navigation link, it's pretty clear that iOS should just go ahead and trigger the default action for those views. But what if they press and hold on one of those items? Or on older iPhones, you could press hard using 3D touch to get the same kind of effect. What should happen? And regardless whether you press and hold or press hard, the result's the same. The user's saying, I want to have more information about this particular thing. Now, SwiftUI lets us attach context menus to our views to provide extra functionality for exactly this situation, all done using a new modifier called context menu. You pass this, a selection of buttons you want to show inside the menu, and they'll be shown in order. So we could bring in a simple context menu that controls a view's background color, for example, like this. At state, private var, background color is color.red. And then inside our layout, I'll have a uh, VStack here with text, hello world, and some padding around it. Then the background of our background color. Below that, we'll have text saying change color with some padding and a context menu behind it. This is going to say, I want to have button red. It will do background color is uh, dot red. Then we'll say there is uh, button green, which does background color dot blue. No, just kidding. <laughs> dot green. And then button blue. Uh, background color is dot blue. And we can go ahead and run that now. And just like uh, with tab view, you can use labels here if you want to, rather than plain old text, and it'll have the text and the uh, icon next to it as much as you want to. So I press and hold on change color, you'll see red, green, and blue all appear, and I press on green, we'll see green, and then pressing on blue will show up blue. Now there's a catch here, which is that to keep user interfaces looking consistent uh, across the apps, I also render any images you place into this menu here, your labels or similar, as uh, solid colors, where the opacity is preserved. And this makes solid photos, like a picture of a dog, for example, useless, sorry dogs. If you had three different dog photos, all with zero opacity, you'd have three colored squares on your screen. Uh, instead, Really, it's designed for things like line art or SF symbols, for example. So we could say something like um, our button here will do background color of red. But then I'll attach a custom label to it with a label saying red and a system image of checkmark.circle.fill with a foreground color of red. So I'm customizing it using a line art icon. Let's see how that looks. I press change color, and boom, there's our thing. Now notice how it's completely ignored that foreground color. Again, it wants uniformity. It wants all to look the same. That's exactly how this thing works. And so with line art icons, yeah, you get some control, but not a great deal beyond that. If you do want that to actually be red, which means destructive, it means bad, you don't want to use foreground color red. That isn't gonna work you want to use a roll of dot destructive. In this case, you know, coloring it red is not really destructive, but we should at least see in practice that is now getting that exact effect we wanted, a foreground color of red. Now I've got a few tips for you if you're gonna use these things to help you get the best user experience you can. First, if you're gonna use them, use them in lots of places because it's frustrating to press and hold on something and have nothing actually happen. Second, Keep your list of options as short as you can. Aim for three or less. And third, I recommend you don't repeat options that you can see elsewhere in the UI. It's just confusing, adds clutter. Now remember, context menus, by their very nature, are hidden parts of your UI. So please think twice about putting important UI options in there because you are just hiding them from the user.